So I was at dinner and a friend said to me, hey, you should do a steam culture on nuclear power generation. And I hadn't even thought of that. It was a great idea. So I went out and did some homework on the internet and I found some basic essentials because I'm no nuclear physicist. So let me tell you what I found out. Is that there's two main kind of reactors. One is a boiling water reactor and another is a pressurized water reactor. And essentially what that means is you're boiling water right in the reactor or you're creating hot, hot pressurized water that doesn't boil and you send it over to a steam generator. Now all reactors involve basically the same thing. They have these fuel rods where they put the fuel down under the water and a lot of stuff happens. Well, what is the stuff? I'm going to tell you. The stuff is uranium-235 and it contains a ton of energy. How much energy? Well, eight of these guys could power your house for an entire year. Now, uranium-235 has its number because that's the number of elements in uranium. And when you add just one more little element to it, it becomes incredibly unstable and it just ruptures. And what happens is when it ruptures, it hits the other atoms beside it. And because we're adding to those, they rupture and expand and go crazy. And they just hit other atoms and they keep expanding and go crazy. And then it's just this rapid expansion of splitting of atoms, which creates a ton of heat energy. And that is what's called a nuclear reaction. So when you hear that term, that's what it's called. So what's happening is all that's going on down under the water in these fuel rods, creating a ton of heat energy, which is creating steam. And when we have steam, we have the power to turn the steam turbine. We turn the steam turbine, we turn a generator, and now you've created electricity. And that's how, basically, in a nutshell, a nuclear power plant works. We're going to look at nuclear power again, but today we're going to be in the submarine. It's the propulsion system that drives the whole submarine. Originated in 1955 with the USS Nautilus, and from there the technology has advanced quite a bit. Now, the difference between land and nuclear is a little more similar than you think. You know, last week we talked about the boiling water reactor and we talked about the pressurized water reactor. Well, the propulsion system in a submarine is a pressurized water reactor. And just to refresh, you have this nuclear reactor and we have uranium atom 235 being split, creating a ton of heat energy. Well, in a pressurized system, we, we have pressurized water that's piped through the reactor so we keep that water under pressure so it doesn't boil. We pipe it over to a steam generator which is filled with water. It heats the water, creates steam, and goes to a turbine. Well, let me tell you about three things that are very different between a submarine and a nuclear plant that's on land. And that is the adverse conditions, the varying loads, and the uranium. Now, the adverse conditions is about a submarine moving, maneuvering, and all sorts of things like that. So the reactor has to be able to withstand to that. Two, the varying loads, um, as opposed to being steady and just generating electricity, a submarine can be cruising along and then, you know, in a matter literally of minutes, they're maneuvering and doing other things that really puts a lot of different uh, load swings on the reactor. And three is that the uranium, because the reactor is smaller, has to be super enriched. So it's kind of like supercharged uranium. So to wrap things up, nuclear propulsion system on submarine and land are both creating steam, but on a submarine, we're turning that propeller. And it, not only that, I didn't mention this earlier, but you should know it turns it very quietly, which is a signature of a nuclear submarine and very important because those guys are all about being undetected.